because it relates to my growing up. I mean, I grew up in New York. I have like a PhD in fashion, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because of the things that I've seen with my family and my neighborhood. When you're in public school in New York City, in a low income public school, what you learn is what the rules are of dressing. Some things are like just illegal, <laughs> you know? So like in that way, I've always been around with fashion, but I never really was fas following fashion per se, you know? Everything has happened, like I said, quite organically. I never really chased fashion. I was never really looking at fashion magazines. I was always interested in people. My family are immigrants from the Dominican Republic. I was the first person born in my family in the United States. My parents don't really speak English. I grew up in a very immigrant neighborhood. Everybody's Caribbean. It was very real growing up in terms of like what I was exposed to, not necessarily at home, but in my surroundings. I didn't really know what I wanted. I wanted to be on television. Like I would go to the Yellow Pages and like find some random ass acting school. You know, my English wasn't great. I had like a really big accent. And at that time it was not about inclusivity. It was just like, you're either American or you're just like not. And American meant like white. I was just so much trying to just get a foot in somewhere. I did like a summer program with dance where they take kids like out of the hood, you know, so they're not like getting into trouble and stuff. That was kind of like my saving grace because I really feel like um, I was having a hard time growing up in terms of being bullied. And it's a typical story that so many like kids in the arts and kids who are gay have, you know, and I always had a lot of fear. And so dance for me became a sort of like, I don't know how conscious it was, but it was like an escape. And then I started to find like my clan within that. So I sort of like separated my dance world and my arts world from my family. Once I found like my community within dance, I, I was very lucky because I was around people, peers my age and teachers who were really like really good influences for me. I didn't really deviate. I was like so determined, you know, it was like insanity. I was like a psycho. When I was in um, at Juilliard, I was very much like a dance geek and I would see all the shows that would come up. Juilliard is in Lincoln Center in New York. So like, I was very fortunate to be exposed to a lot of performances and a lot of European companies would come and perform at Lincoln Center and around the city. And I would also spend like countless hours in the, in the performing arts library, like looking at dance videos and researching like really ra random companies in Europe. And it just felt like a different planet. You know, when they would come to New York, I would see these shows and I would just be like, I don't ever see anything like this here. It just felt like a whole world. My last year of school, I was going to the, all these auditions for dance stuff. And I would always get quite far, but I wasn't really getting the gig, you know? And when I came to Europe, I had much more of like a, like a feedback, a positive feedback. And so I moved to Germany and to Mannheim for a year. I was 20, 20 21. You know, so it was like a really big deal because like I got what I wanted in a way. And then with the photography, you know, like I never really had a plan to be a photographer. When I would go on tour with the dance companies, I would just kind of sit around the streets and like take pictures of people, like candid shots. I had like a real interest in it. I would see performances and I would always have this thing like that would be a moment, that would be a moment, that, you know. And so I always kind of had a camera around me. I started to look at photo books and I started to really see a world that really related to the pictures that I was taking outside, but I really had no reference because I've been in such a dance bubble my whole life. Like I saw Richard Avedon, American West, and and I was looking at a lot at that time at like Vivian Sasson, and you know, she was doing all these things with all these like kind of contorted bodies, and which is what, what I was doing with my friends in the studio. And so I really saw a relationship there. And then I, you know, it really started to open like a world for me. In 2017, um, one of my friends who I said, his name is Mac Folks, who, he passed away he was like a mentor to me he had mentioned to me oh I think you should apply to the air festival but he's like I don't think you're ready for this yet like he was very sharp with me I love him for that and at the same time I had done this like portfolio review in Berlin and one of the people that I met there um, you know he was very positive and he was just like I think that you should apply to this festival called air and I had remembered it because my friend had just mentioned it to me and I was like, I don't really know what this festival is. He was like, well, the deadline is two, it's in two weeks, so I think you should just send your stuff. You have to send like two series. I didn't even really have a series. I was just taking pictures of my friends and you know, in the studio and I would like sneak into construction sites and I was, I became very obsessive. I applied to the festival and then I became one of the finalists. And then the head of the jury that year was Tim Walker and then he brought his whole crew with him and it was this very like British crew. It was Camille Lowther, Jerry Stafford, Jacob, like it's all these people, you know, and and I won. I didn't get the main prize, but I got two other prizes, and I felt like 
they were very supportive of me. Since I've been taking pictures, I haven't really told people that I've been a dancer because I would feel like they would not take me serious. I told him, Tim, all of this, you know? He was really supportive. He was like, you know, you need to really like own your history because, you know, you have something that maybe these people don't have. That festival for me, like, <clears throat> opened a lot, a lot for me. Like, I can only speak from my personal experience, but as one of the winners, then I got to show some work the next year. Then when I went to show the work the next year, they offered me a residency. And that residency, they sent me to Ireland. You know, from that, I had to do a work about cultural heritage. Again, I really had no plan. I was living in, in Wexford. It was an incredible experience for me, a very new experience. I learned how to print. I learned how to develop my own film. I All I did was, you know, work on this series. And in the following spring, I opened the, that festival with some of the pictures from that series and then six months later randomly in London a guy tapped me on my shoulder and he was like hey like I said are you, were you the guy who did those pictures in Ireland and I was like okay yes and he's like would you want to make a book and I was like wow this is wild so you know and then eventually that led me to loose joints um, I didn't go with that guy but that led me to loose joints I published that book and then I, I published now this this second one with them that came out this spring uh, called O, and then this year um, I was asked to be the head of the jury for, for the photography jury for the ERS festival, which was wild. So it was really an incredible experience for me. I think all my experiences, it's almost like this toolbox that I've collected that I really start to see them being useful, if that makes sense. Even though it hasn't been a linear path, all these things have really prepared me for whatever's happening in a way. I've been very fortunate to work with people that I really enjoy and that I've started to build relationships with. And when you are in a studio and you're working with certain some of these people and they're bringing their own expertise and that together you're sort of collaborating to like build this puzzle. It is fashion at the end of the day, but for me, it, it becomes something else. My whole life has sort of brought me to this fashion world and not necessarily through, a, I'm gonna be a fashion photographer. When I stare at a portrait that I'm really moved by, I don't have the words to speak. I'm very moved by this idea of sort of like transitions. And it's this thing that is like above the actual thing that's happening. You know, with dance, it's this kind of, this very soulful, spiritual thing that you're, it takes a long time to master. You can't really ex ex like pinpoint what it is, but you can feel it. And that sensation is what like really moves me. But I don't have like a word for that. And it's the same thing when I look at a photograph and I'm just like, Oh my God, like I don't really know what this is, but this thing that's happening is what's really moving me. Yeah, I mean, of course we all grew up with photos, but there's just something when they're put in a gallery space, they become like heroes or something like this. <laughs> Casting is, is everything because it's really the sort of what you're putting all your hopes and dreams on in a way, you know? Sometimes you're working and then you get like a digital of somebody, you know, and then like they're selling you the world. This person looks like this. And you realize this person is 17 years old you know, they just got a short haircut and now they look like a woman, you know? And I'm just like, actually, this is just a girl and you're putting all your projections on this person. And then you see them in the studio and it's really a gamble because you're expecting this person to fulfill all these projections that you put on them, but she's just a girl with a short haircut. Everyone has a history. Everyone has like upbringing. Everyone that gives you an outlook on the world. Something that I've learned or I'm learning is that like my outlook is also okay. Like I'm Richard Avedon again. Like he's not playing fashion, you know, he is doing what he considers beautiful. We can get very lost, you know, there's so much social media, so much this, but it's just like, what do you think about this? And that sometimes takes, takes you like centering yourself and it's like, what is your viewpoint on this? A lot of times, many people don't know. And I think when you kind of like take, you know, scratch away everything and you just ask yourself like, how does my history inform this moment of like deciding what needs to be done you will you you can get quite far because that's only that's your unique point of view it's a really good question because it sort of like brings you back to zero and then you're not so focused on well this person did that and that person did that you know then you're just kind of like well we don't we don't need to do that you know and also surround yourself by people that can really give you honest feedback you have to kind of put your ego to the side and be like okay like you have to ask yourself like what didn't work there what worked there and so that kind of becomes your own school i think it's not enough to say I don't like it or I like it I think it's really important to ask yourself like why don't you like it and really try to break it down sort of dissect why this is not working because if you really do that you you will have an answer it's not enough to say I don't know you know
know, you obviously know because you said it. It's coming from a place, and it's coming from some kind of informed place. You know, so once you dissect that, that also informs your your, your future. I don't know. I just kind of keep going as I've been going, and then see where that takes me.